In Genesis 17, God promised the patriarch Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. Who would be those nations today? Well, we understand that Jews, some of the people groups known as Arabs, Palestinians, and others can clearly claim Abrahamic descent. But what happened to those 10 northern Israelite tribes that were deported out of their land and seemingly disappeared in the 700s BC? Hi, this is Dr. Michael Bogart with Aspect Ministries. In this video series, we've been looking into this very intriguing and mysterious enigma. So in the sixth video, I want to start by switching gears a bit and focusing on a little known but well-documented ancient empire, Khazaria. Now the Khazars seem to have been a Turkish tribe who dominated the area of Ukraine and southern Russia from the 600s through the 900s AD. Within that empire, people practicing some form of the Israelite religion seem to have been living among the Khazars since the beginning of their recorded history. We also know that people called the Khmerians and Scythians traveled through and stayed for a time in that same region. If you watched the fifth video in this series, you'll remember that it's possible that these people may have had Israelite elements in their makeup. In any case, it seems quite reasonable to assume that at least some of the deported Israelites could have eventually settled in this region of southern Russia and formed a part of what would become the Khazarian people. Then, for reasons that are not completely clear, in the 900s AD, the Khazar elite class as a group converted to Judaism when they came in conflict with the Byzantine and early Russian empires. Legend has it that the Russians, who were alarmed at the violent and devious ways of their Khazarian neighbors and fearful of their growing power, delivered an ultimatum to them. The ultimatum was that they had to convert to one of the Abrahamic faiths, either Islam, Christianity, or Judaism. And maybe they were hoping that if the Khazars moved away from their native paganism, it would calm down their raiding and pillaging ways. So left with few options, the Khazars chose Judaism. However, any changes were very minimal and the conflict continued, prompting a Russian punitive expedition and the collapse of Khazaria around 1000 AD. The account continues that many of the Khazarian elites who had converted to Judaism fled west into western Russia and Poland. There they became a significant part, maybe even a dominant element within Eastern European Jewry, also known as the Ashkenazi Jews. Now this much seems possible from the few records that we have. But was there enough of an actual Jewish presence among the Khazars to allow a real Jewish identity to take root? This is pure speculation, but as I mentioned, it could be that there were Israelites among them from the very earliest of times. Historical documents from the time also make it clear that the Byzantines to the south, with their capital in Constantinople, now Istanbul, Turkey, went through periods when they expelled their Jews. Some of these Jews went into Khazaria. So eventually there may have been enough actual Israelites and Jews living among the Khazars so that they could join with them and experience some kind of transformation into a real Jewish identity. At least that's the theory. So there may be elements of other people groups mixed in with the Ashkenazi Jews. Now I mentioned Ashkenazi Jews a moment ago. Let me pause for a minute and explain that today there are subgroups among Jewish people. Ashkenazis claim recent origin in Central and Eastern Europe. These are Polish, Russian, Hungarian, Romanian, and other Jewish people of the region. Jews whose more recent origins are from Spain, Portugal, Italy, parts of France, and even the Netherlands after the Spanish expelled their Jews in the 1500s, these people belong to a subgroup called Sephardi Jews. Jews scattered in Middle Eastern countries are known as Mizrahi. Many historians dismiss the idea of a Khazarian connection with Eastern European Jews as far-fetched and not based on any significant genetic or linguistic evidence. However, Russian and other medieval sources maintain such a connection with the Ashkenazim. Another possibility, one that's more accepted by modern critics, is an association with mountain Jews of the city of Kuba in the nation of Azerbaijan. Mountain Jews seem to have settled in this part of Azerbaijan when they left Persia in the 5th century AD. Once again, we must rely on ancient sources and oral traditions, but these mountain Jews claim that their ancestors had important contacts with the Khazars and that they not only played a major role in the Khazars' conversion to Judaism, but that they may have provided the haven for Jewish Khazars to settle when they were expelled from their homeland by the Russians. 
How much of these legends is true? Well, again, it's hard to say. If there was any significant presence of the northern Israelite tribes on the steppes of southern Russia in ancient times, they may have indeed made up an element in the Khazarian kingdom. However, it is clear that there was some conversion of Khazars to Judaism in the Middle Ages. It's also clear that they were driven out of their lands by the Russians around 1000 AD. They certainly migrated somewhere and joined with some group of people. My best guess is that these refugees may have gone a number of different directions, but it would make sense that at least some of them would have joined others who practiced Judaism, whether in Europe or in the Caucasus. Okay, so much for this episode. We will change gears a bit in part seven and look at how the Jews themselves almost certainly represent some of these lost northern tribes of Israel. We'll see you then. This is Dr. Michael Bogart with Aspect Ministries. <music>